What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be looking at how Manchester City broke down the defensive shape of Manchester United in the Manchester Derby in the Premier League. Now before we get into the tactics behind the match, check out both my books. There's links in the description below. Also, be sure to check out Live Tag Pro. It's how I'm making this video. And as always, check out my tactics course in the description as well. There's also a new Discord that we're starting with a community of like-minded people. So be sure to join all that. And let's get right in the tactics behind the video. So now Manchester City, throughout the match, they went with a 3-2 base with two attacking midfielders and Erling Holland as their focal point up top. Now what was interesting about the 3-2 base is the wide center backs connected mostly towards the wingers playing on the out playing on the outside shoulders of the wide midfielders of Manchester United in their 4-4-2. Now the three middle players, Ruben Diaz, John Stones and Rodri would look to take out the first line of pressure in the central corridors against Manchester United. They would do this by skewing triangles, often seeing Rodri or John Stones dropping in alongside Ruben Diaz in the half space while the other maintains the central position, skewing the triangle as we'll see in further examples. Now what this would do is highlight the three versus two, connect them diagonally, and then progressing through the center would then just allow the midfield to narrow, to narrow offering more support through these wide triangles, which they could then threaten. Erling Holland would pin the two central defenders and the two holding midfielders of Manchester United typically would follow the runs of the tens and often join the last line of defense, making them defend with five or even six players in the last line of defense as they would move further back and defend in their low block. The partnership of Kevin De Bruyne and Phil Foden worked out very well allowing Phil Foden to access the half space when De Bruyne would move into a wide area. De Bruyne would also have the freedom to overload the opposite half space as well. And we'll see John Stone's movement after they've taken out the mid block and move into the final third where they need to create dangerous chances. Now, as we talked about the skewed triangle, Rodri dropping in, Walker advancing his position to compensate, connecting this wide triangle between him Phil Foden and Kevin De Bruyne often sparking a lot of movements getting De Bruyne on the outside of the defensive block facing forward with Phil Foden between the lines. But Rodri always maintained diagonal connection referencing the two strikers to John Stones in central positions so they can continue the attack centrally and act as a placeholder to affect the two forwards of Manchester United. The same could be true on this left side if John Stones were to drop in to the left of Ruben Diaz. And often, because of the passive pressure of Manchester United, the two holding midfielders, the player who's, at, who's playing behind the first line, would often move higher to create separation. And the player deeper on the ball could diagonally dribble across to get one of these players to jump or even entice a midfielder to jump if they were playing more passive creating space elsewhere. Now as we see here John Stones moving a bit higher now in line with the two holding midfielders of Manchester United and again referencing the two strikers of Manchester United creating this diagonal connection and looking to start on the blind side of the attacker and then popping in on the inside shoulder to connect this passing lane and try and progress as much as possible in at least their first progression in these central corridors, especially around the center where they could then move diagonally and move into wider positions to get their wide triangles involved. Now we see Kevin De Bruyne floating into the left half space, overloading it with Bernardo Silva, often a trend throughout the match overloading different half spaces at different moments of the game, and then we'd have an isolation on the far side. This would make it a bit awkward for Manchester United defensively because of their man orientation around their holding midfielders and their frequency of joining the last line when players were threatened. This would then highlight the 1v1 on the far side when situa situations like this did occur. 
Now finally, when they go into the final third and look at the chance creation phase, John Stones would typically move higher starting more centrally, but as players would threaten, he would fill in in the half space, or he would threaten and different players would fill in. So John Stones playing between the two holding midfielders, again looking to make it awkward with their shifting and looking to create a free player centrally, and having him as a placeholder would allow him access to both half spaces if players were to threaten. The three players in front of Ruben Diaz were the first line of their rest defense, maintained close proximity to the outlets, giving them very good stability when they counterpressed with Ruben Diaz covering in behind. Now we see the movement from Phil Foden and Kevin De Bruyne, getting Kevin De Bruyne in a less high density area, facing forward a lot of the times with players like Phil Foden to run in behind, create double movements, and to get on the ball. And as we see the players jumping, Lindelof here jumping from the last line of defense, creating opportunities to threaten either from the midfield or, or spinning off from Erling Holland. And when the ball would go to Doku, Lindelof having been jumped would open up the the back pose for Erling Holland, where he likes to operate in with his blind side movements against the direction of the ball. Now finally our last image here, we see again the counter pressing structure, a 1-3 from Manchester City, Ruben Diaz just off our screen here, and the compactness of Manchester United, John Stones playing between holding midfielders, Kevin De Bruyne in the right half space, and Julian Alvarez in the left. Oftentimes we see channel runs from Kevin De Bruyne, taking either the holding midfielder or Bernardo Silva with him, giving movement for John Stones to join when the ball would be played wide. So this was just one frequently used movement, but the base setup was about the same. They'd have a three versus two around the two holding midfielders of Manchester United, which they tried to overcompensate with narrow, narrow wide midfielders to then try and block the half space but ultimately giving free progression out wide and giving their wide players the ability to face forward, threaten the golden zone, or directly in the half space when they would, when they would receive the ball. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you do, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one.